Following the completion of the first four Panzer III series, it was realized that they left much room for improvements and changes. The next version in line was the Panzer III Ausführung E, which introduced a number of improvements, like a necessary increase in armor protection. More importantly, it finally solved the significant issues with the problematic suspensions from previous versions with the introduction of a simple torsion bar suspension design. The most important legacy of this vehicle was that it set the production standard for all Panzer III versions to come. Hello, and welcome to another voice article on Tank Encyclopedia. I'm your host, Dan, and this episode on the Panzerkampfwagen III Ausführung E was brought to you by our generous supporters on Patreon. If you too have a few dollars to spare and like armored history, consider dropping by and supporting us. The link should be in the description. In March 1936, Waffenproof Facen 6, Weapons Testing Establishment No. 6, the Automotive Design Office of the German Army, issued an Entwicklung von Panzerkampfwagen, or Armored Fighting Vehicle Development, document, in which it described a possible further development and use of tanks. A great deal of it was dedicated to armor protection. At that time, the German army had imposed weight limits for its tanks so that they were able to cross bridges without collapsing them. In the case of the Panzer III series, this limit was 18 tons. This regulation, together with other factors, the number of crewmen, armament, power output of the engine, etc., actually limited the effective armor thickness of the vehicles. Most German tanks were thus lightly armored, as armor was intended to provide protection against small caliber rounds only. The new document put great emphasis on the fact that weapons like the French 25mm rapid-fire anti-tank gun could destroy the lightly armored German vehicles without a problem. The development of the Panzer III Ausführung E incorporated a number of suggestions from this document. The armored thickness was increased to 30mm, providing better overall protection. It also incorporated some highly advanced features advocated by the chief engineer of Vauprov 6, Niekamp. He intended to increase the maximum speed of the Panzer III to a staggering 70 km per hour. This would be done by replacing the engine with a more powerful model, introducing a new 10-speed semi-automatic transmission, and replacing the previous complicated 8-small road wheel suspension with a torsion bar type. The larger wheels were chosen as they had a longer service life than smaller models. The use of lubricated tracks with rubber pads was also suggested. After some consideration, the problems with the quicker wear of the suspension at speeds of 70 km per hour was deemed unfeasible and the idea was rejected. The maximum speed was limited to 40 km per hour and the lubricated tracks were replaced with normal steel cast ones. Production orders for 96 Panzer III Asf E tanks would be placed by the Herzwaffenamt. It was planned to complete the first vehicles in May 1938, and the last by September of the same year. To fulfill the production quota, and in order to include other manufacturers into direct tank production, Daimler-Benz and MAN Werk Nürnberg were included. Daimler-Benz was to build 41, and MAN the remaining 55. These were to be chassis numbers 60442 to 60496. As the German industry slowly began increasing production capabilities, these two simply could not produce all necessary parts. For this reason, the production of 90 turrets was given to Alcat, and six more to Krupp. Due to these delays, production at MAN was only fully completed by the end of 1939. When Alcat actually completed these vehicles is unknown, as the documentation did not survive the war. The Panzer III hull can be divided into three major sections. These are the forward-mounted transmission, central crew compartment, and rear engine compartment. The front hull was where the transmission and steering systems were placed and was protected by an angled armor plate. The two bolted square-shaped plates that were previously added on the front transmission armor were removed. Unlike the larger Panzer IV, the Panzer III was not provided with driver and radio operator hatches. The Panzer III Asf E received two small emergency escape doors placed on the hull sides, just behind the first return roller. On top of the Panzer III Asf E hull, a fully enclosed and square-shaped superstructure was added. 
The position of the top left driver visor and the machine gun ball mount next to it were unchanged. These were replaced with newer and improved models. In the case of the machine gun ball mount, this was the Kugelblende Dreisig. The driver vision port was replaced with the Ferrezelklappe Dreisig model. The driver also had one smaller vision port placed on the left side of the superstructure. It was provided with a small 8mm wide visor slit. Initially, the radio operator was not provided with the side vision port. During production, however, it would be added on some vehicles. The turret of the Panzer III Ausführung E inherited the overall design from the previous versions of the vehicle, but there were still some modifications implemented. Firstly, the top turret plate was at a slightly different angle. The gun mantlet also received some modifications, with added protective covers for the twin machine gun mount. Each of the turret sides received new pyramid-shaped observation vision ports. While the right visor port had an 8mm wide slit, the left port didn't have one at all. To the back, the simple one-piece doors were replaced with newer two-piece doors. The forward door had an observation port, while the second door had a pistol port. In addition, the two square machine gun ports, located at the rear of the turret, were also replaced with new rounded variants. The commander's cupola on the Asf E was bolted to the rear of the turret top. It had five vision slits protected with sliding blocks. For extra protection, behind each vision slit, an armored glass block was also added. The suspension of the Panzer III Asf E consisted of six doubled road wheels on each side. These were suspended using a combination of individual swing axles together with torsion bars, which were placed in the whole bottom. The upper movement of each wheel's swing arm was limited by contact blocks covered in rubber. Additionally, the first and last wheels were equipped with a hydraulic shock absorber. To cope with the increase in weight, from 16 tons on the ASF-D to 19.5 tons, a new, stronger engine was installed. This was a 12-cylinder water-cooled Maybach HL120TR, which produced 265 horsepower at 2800 RPM. With this power unit, with this power unit, the ausf es maximum speed was increased to 40 km per hour, while the cross-country speed was 15. The Panzer III ausf e was equipped with the 10-speed, and one reverse, Maybach Variotex SRG328145 semi-automatic transmission. Using this somewhat unproven transmission caused significant mechanical breakdowns. To somewhat resolve this issue, an accelerator clutch would be installed. The problem still remained, and the transmission would eventually be replaced with the older, more reliable SSG-76 on the Panzer III Ausf H version. When the Germans had been examining the proper armor thickness needed for the new Panzer III variant, they mainly focused on the French 25mm quick-firing anti-tank gun as the primary threat. They eventually decided that 30mm farmer should be up to the task. The frontal armor plate was strong enough to resist rounds from the 25mm gun at ranges of over 500 meters at 30 degrees. The Panzer III Asf E was equipped with the Nebelketzen Abwurfvorrichtung, or smoke grenade rack system, placed on the rear of the hull. This rack contained five grenades, which were activated with a wire system by the tank's commander. At the end of 1940, most available Panzer III's, including the Asf E, were reinforced with additional 30mm face hardened plates. These were placed in the front hull and superstructure, but also on the rear. It's worth mentioning that not all Panzer III's actually received the extra protection for various reasons. The Asf E had the same crew of five as all other variants of the Panzer III the commander, the gunner and the loader, who were positioned in the turret, and the driver and radio operator, who were in the hull. The armament configuration of the Panzer III ASF E was unchanged from the previous versions. It consisted of one MG-34 machine gun mounted in the superstructure in a combination of the 3.7cm KWK L46.5 cannon and two additional machine guns in the turret. One change implemented was the repositioning of the left turret-mounted machine gun, which slightly protruded out. This was done to give the crew more working space when replacing the drum magazines. Speaking of drum magazines, while these were initially used to feed the machine guns from June 1940 onwards, these were replaced by belts. 
During the early stages of the Panzer III's development, the Germans were aware that there was a possibility of the 3.7cm gun becoming obsolete. The lack of production capabilities was the main reason for not installing a more potent gun from the start. This is the reason why the turret ring was left wide enough for a larger caliber gun to be installed. In December of 1940, the rearmament of the Panzer III Asf E with the 5cm KWK L42 semi-automatic gun began. With the new gun also came a new, rounded, 35mm thick external gun mountlet. Another change was the reduction of the number of machine guns in the turret to one. With the installation of the new gun, the ammunition load was reduced from the original 120 to 87 rounds, or, depending on the source, 99. The removal of one of the turret machine guns also led to the reduction of the number of machine gun rounds carried inside the vehicle to 3,750 rounds. As the asf es became available, they would initially be issued to training units. Their first operational use, in limited numbers, was during the German annexation of Czechoslovakia during March 1939. Prior to the invasion of Poland in September 1939, the Germans had 148 Panzer III vehicles available, from ASF A to ASF E. Some 98 would be allocated for combat operations, although only a small number of these managed to see combat, with some not even managing to reach the front due to problems with their transmissions. By May 1940, the number of Panzer III's was increased to 349 vehicles, which were distributed to seven Panzer divisions. The Panzer Division saw extensive combat operations against French armor. An example of this was the 4th Panzer Division, which, with the 3rd Panzer Division, were part of the 16th Panzer Corps under the command of General Erich Herpner. The combined strength of these two divisions was over 670 tanks, although the majority of these were Panzer I's and Panzer II's. Opposing them was a force of 176 Samoa S-35 tanks, and 293 Hotchkiss tanks of various models. In comparison to the Germans, the French redistributed their armor formations across the 35-kilometer-wide front. During the drive towards the village of Hanut, the forward elements of the 4th Panzer Division, consisting of Panzer I's and Panzer II's, managed to capture the village. The French made a counterattack with over 20 Hotchkiss tanks. While these managed to gain the upper hand against the early model German tanks, once the Panzer III's arrived, the situation changed dramatically in favor of the Germans. The French lost 11 of their Hotchkiss tanks, most being credited to the Panzer III's, with a few to the weaker Panzer II. Later that day, the Panzers engaged a group of Samoa S-35 tanks. After losing four tanks, the French retreated again. Eventually, with the losses of some 160 tanks, the majority being Panzer I's and Panzer II's, the Germans broke through the French line. The French, who had lost 140 tanks, were forced to retreat. The Germans could recover and repair most of their lost tanks, while well, the French were unable to do so. The Panzer III's were at a disadvantage against the larger B-1 Beast tanks. For example, during the battles around Sedan, a single B-1 tank managed to destroy some 11 Panzer III tanks alone. Combat experience in the West showed that, while the Panzer III was not proof against the French 47mm gun, Neither was their own 3.7cm gun effective. The Panzer III's gun was only effective against the Samoa S-35 side armor from ranges of less than 200 meters. Thanks to their superior speed, training and tactics, as well as their use of radios, the German tanks could easily outmaneuver French tanks and engage them from the sides and rear, where they were more vulnerable. The five-man crew proved to be superior in contrast to the French, who normally employed two- or three-man crews. In the case of the Somme YS-35, the tank commander had to take several roles during the heat of battle, including loading and firing the main gun, finding targets, and commanding the vehicle, which naturally overburdened him. On the other hand, in German vehicles, each crew member had one specific role to complete, which provided the German tanks with a greater tactical advantage. After the French campaign, the Germans tried to amend some of the shortcomings identified with the Panzer III, specifically regarding its armor and firepower. The Panzer III would be rearmed with the 5cm L42 gun and receive additional 30mm of frontal and rear armor. This included the asf E, but, despite their best attempts, not all tanks were modified by mid-1941. 
The ASF-E likely saw use during the German operations in the Balkans. The use of the ASF-E in Africa is not completely clear. At the start of German operations, for example, the 5th Panzer Regiment had 61 Panzer III's, 10 had been lost during transport, armed with the 3.7cm gun, and the 8th Panzer Regiment had 31. It is possible that some of these were the ASF-E version. For the invasion of the Soviet Union, there were 350 Panzer III's armed with the 3.7cm gun, and a further 1,090 armed with the 5cm gun. By this time, it is somewhat difficult to pinpoint the precise version of the Panzer III used, as the sources rarely mention them specifically. The identification of the precise version is not always possible, as the ASF-F looked exactly the same as the asf -E. Like in the previous campaigns, the Panzer III was the backbone of the German armored thrust. The German tanks were able to quickly overcome the older Soviet models, like the T-26 and the BT series. The T-34 and the KVs, however, proved to be almost invulnerable to the guns of the German tanks. Following the harsh German losses in the Soviet Union, it is likely that only a small number of ASFEs would have survived 1941. There were multiple variants of the Panzer III Ausf E produced, including the Panzer Befehlswagen, or tank command vehicle configuration. This included a number of modifications, some of which were reducing the armament to only one machine gun, using a dummy main gun, tied its purpose as a command vehicle, fixing the turret in place, replacing the gunner and loader with one more radio operator and a command adjutant, adding additional radio equipment, and, probably most noticeably, adding a large antenna to the rear of the turret. In total, some 45 such vehicles would be built by Daimler-Benz. A very few ASF-Es were modified to perform the role of target spotters for self-propelled artillery batteries. In this role, they were referred to as the Panzerbeobachtungswagen III. These vehicles were modified by removing the main gun and replacing it with a new gun mantlet that had a wooden dummy gun, and a ball mount placed in the center of the mantlet. In conclusion, the Panzer III ASF E received a number of modifications and improvements in comparison to previous versions. Most noticeable were the added armor and the use of a new type of suspension, which was simpler and more efficient. On the other hand, the new transmission was problematic and was not properly tested. In the early stages of the war, despite the somewhat weaker main armament, thanks to its speed, crew training, and radio equipment, the Panzer III asf -E could easily outflank its opponents. Perhaps the greatest success of the asf -E was that it provided the Germans with a good base for further modifications and improvements of a vehicle that would become the backbone of the Panzer divisions in the first years of World War II. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Reddit, and if you use Discord, there's a link to our community server in the description. Also, likes, comments, and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.